Hello, my fellow Dirty Dirty Gardeners. I am Iron, also known as Dirty Dragon. This is my second video today. You guys are so lucky. This is because I want to do it. It's so much fun to do these videos. It has let up raining, though I can see my breath in mid-May in Victoria, BC. Not impressed. Anyway, good conditions for going outside to catch pictures and videos of common weeds in the garden. These are the only ones that I have. No, 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 no. Let me correct that. These are the ones I deal with the most in my garden. Not the most common ones. Some people deal with a lot worse shit than I have. <laughs> so um, I will go probably and do a second video, maybe in the summertime sometime, and show some more um, of the, the really horrible, tenacious stuff that other people deal with. But for now, I'm going to go over what I have in my garden. And um, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's enough said about that. Let's move on. This right here is Herb Robert, another weed in our local gardens, uh, also called Stinking Robert because when you pull it, oh man, it is stank. It's kind of pretty, I think. Um, let's see if the camera will actually focus on the flower here instead of the background. Yeah, it's kind of a cute little flower. Fuzzy red stems. Creeping Buttercup, one of my favorites. This is a motherfucker. It spreads by stolons like a strawberry. These uh, runners, they go wherever the fuck it wants and then make a new plant. And it is currently about half of my backyard. I keep it mostly out of my garden beds, um, but it's kind of more of a ground cover right now, and it goes everywhere. It's just, yeah, it's just happy to be anywhere. It doesn't matter what the conditions are, really. I, I haven't found it to be particular. Ugh, yuck. This one here is Doc. And it's a bitch because it has roots to fucking China. No joke. I'm going to have to dig that out with my garden knife later. It probably goes down, I'm guessing, at least 10 inches. The taproot is um, way bigger than the actual plant. So, of course, if you don't get the taproot, then the plant comes back. Just like a dandelion. <sighs> anyway, apparently this shit is edible. I don't know. For you weird people that like to eat weeds. On to the next one. Hey, you all know this one, but I'm gonna say it anyway, just cause, you know, that's what I'm doing. Dandelion! No. Dandelion. Yeah, so I don't really care about this one so much. Um, my son calls them wishes, which I think is really, really sweet, because when he was a little guy, that's how I introduced them to him, is blowing the wishes. Uh, so he gets pretty upset when I mow the lawn and mow the wish plants away. <laughs> I tell him, don't worry, they will be back. Uh, there's the leaf. Most animals, um, like herbivorous animals really like these leaves. And yes, you can eat them too. Uh, I don't know about the flowers. I remember when I was a kid and I ate these things, they tasted like freaking shit because of the sap. Oh, so nasty tasting. A bitter, bitter... Blech. Yeah, so go ahead, help yourself, eat that if you want. Yeah, go for it. This is a fun one for kids. Um, it's called cleavers or sticky weed. And it's covered with these little tiny hairs. If you pull it, it sticks just about anything uh, and it grows these little um, seed heads later on that are like little burrs and they stick in the fur of animals um, I don't I don't really mind it it's very easy to pull um, but it will self-seed like crazy 
Uh, but yeah, kids seem to like this, you know, they throw it on somebody's back and then, ha ha ha, look, he's got a plant hanging off of his back. That's cleavers, sticky weed. This pretty one here is purple dead nettle in the Lamium family. Again, I don't mind it too much. It doesn't seem to bother me too, too much in my garden. I don't imagine that it's really, um... A problem I think it's pretty easy to pull out uh, and as you can see it's quite ornamental it likes you know shitty soil this is next to the driveway um, I've seen it growing lots um, next to uh, next to roads and things like that it's it's definitely more of a like a sunshiny type thing I don't think it grows very much in the shade and it's probably edible but don't quote me on that you know eat it Try, try if you want, <laughs> but I seem to remember it's on my edible list. Don't eat it, but eat it, but tell me what it's like, okay? But don't say I did it, told you to do that. Don't, just don't. <laughs> okay, good luck with that. This little one here is one that I have a lot of in my garden, and I think it likes to be everywhere. It's called Bittercress. That's the common name. It's in the cardamine family. And um, it's super easy to pull. The crown is usually pretty, um, pretty tight and firm, so no, no hard troubles getting it out. But if you get it at the wrong time, like this one right here has started to make seeds already. I'm just trying to get that in focus. These guys will yeet themselves all over the fucking place and start new babies so you really want to get it before it does that but if you don't don't stress because like I said it's super easy to get it out of the ground yeah and that one is everywhere everywhere doesn't matter if it's freaking dry as the Sahara that's clover down there that's a different plant entirely this is what the leaves look like of this little one here it's like a little rosette of these little delicate round leaves um, yeah, so that one is uh, that one is very common in like all the conditions of my garden. This one hiding in the dark a little bit here is oxalis. Um, it has little yellow flowers, and in the full sun, it has burgundy leaves. This one is under the eaves. They like super super dry, well drained type conditions. And the roots go down underground, um, and they, they just keep trailing underground, and you got to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull, and if you're lucky, you'll get them all. If you're not lucky, it'll come back. Uh, so it's tenacious, and it hangs on like you're, you know, trying to kill it. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, whatever, it doesn't bother me so much. It doesn't come in most of my garden, only in the dry beds. There it is. This one here is commonly called willow herb, and it likes moist conditions, like it'll grow in my pond quite happily. It is a relative of fireweed. Uh, it has tiny little pink flowers, not flowering yet, um, and it can actually grow some pretty nice colors in the fall. It is very, very seedy. It'll go everywhere. Um, this is one of the ones that I deal with most in my garden. But it is super easy to pull. I say as it's not easy to pull. Yeah, not too bad. So the crown doesn't go down very far. It doesn't have a taproot or anything like that. Um, if the soil is moist, which it normally is, because that's where it grows, right? Um, if it's dried out a little bit, then the roots will hang on pretty tight. Is my neighbor's pet, Himalayan blackberry. I let it grow over the fence because I don't have to deal with it and I get berries. <laughs> so it's kind of a win-win. Um, you've all seen this. I'm sure you have no problem identifying it. One that can be a little bit tricky to get rid of. A lot of people complain about it. This is our little um, invasive viola here. Um, and it tends to run as well, and it has, uh, by running, I mean that it puts out, like, runners like a strawberry. Um, 
and it has a bit of a, a tenacious root in there as well. It's its wrapper name, Tenacious Root. Uh, you can see it's got quite a, an extensive root system for such a little plant. Um, they're kind of pretty. I mean, the leaves are a nice little heart shape and the flowers aren't terrible, but they are indeed a weed. This one here is a little bit tricky to ID right now, um, but I'm going to add it on anyway because it's a good idea to get at it if you've got it in your garden. Um, it's called Black Medic. Looks exactly like a clover, except that it's much, much smaller, teeny tiny. And it usually forms a mat instead of growing upright. And the flowers on this are um, just like a clover, but they're tiny and yellow. Um, it's also a uh, nitrogen fixer. So um, it helps the soil in that case. It's a legume. But um, it also has very, very wiry, uh, extensive um, matting roots. I mean, you can see this one here has spread. <clears throat> this is next to my driveway. It usually goes into kind of crappy, super dry, hot, hot, hot places. So this plot here, this is regular clover, just to give you a little bit of a, an example of how different they are for size. And it's not because one is a baby and one isn't. It's because they're very different plants. Same family, though. Um, yeah, so these guys will go all in, like, in between rocks. And um, they'll just make this mat of really, really tough to remove roots, especially late in summer when it gets hot and dry. It just hangs on like a son of a bitch. Um, so that is Black Medic. I don't know why they call it that. I think I looked it up and I forgot. So you can go and look it up. Google is your friend.